Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Good evening, bots and listeners, and welcome to another episode of the Fire Pit Podcast and selection section number seven. I'm Josh, British name Reginald, and this is our first selection section and first episode of season two, and we couldn't be more excited. So now we know it's been a while since our last selection section show, selection section number five, because selection section number six was lost to the uh, void. Too good for this good world. It was too pure. Too pure. Pour pour one out for Selection Section 6. But uh, we'll probably fail to capture the majesty and brilliance of Selection Section number 6. But, you know, we're going to more than make up for it with our first destination of Season 2. But before we reveal where we're going, we uh, need a little bit of a refresher of the rules. So, Tom, would you mind giving us that little refresher, please? Well, I would be delighted, my good sir. Stop it. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Josh. Mm, Tom Keep here. it going. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, thank you, Josh. Tom here, British name Thompson. And before we have Dan pull the tarp down on where we're going next, the grand reveal, if you will, we should rehash the rules here. So our podcast works like this. We take an actor or actress from our last film and move them on to the next one. So our last movie episode, the destination was Groundhog Day, which if you trace it all the way back through all the episodes and all the actors and actresses, it connects all the way back to our very first episode, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze. Not the Bay one. That's... It's a fascinating gimmick, and one we feel gives our podcast a unique flow on how we choose our movies, and also keeps it um, a little random, if you will. So every six weeks, we choose a destination film and a film to work towards, like the aforementioned films, uh, taking someone from Groundhog Day to kick off where we're going next and then where we're going next. So now, for the big reveal... I turn it over to Dan as he tells us where we will be trying to spend the next six weeks getting to. Drum roll, please, Nigel! Thank you, Thompson. Nigel here, American named Dan, and we welcome you all to selection section number seven, season two, the Fire Pits sequel season. Now, during season one, we actually did watch a few sequels to films that were meh, like Predator 2 disappointing like Die Hard 2, or surprisingly awesome, or dare I say excellent, like Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. (laughs) I see what you did there. (laughs) Very clever, Dan. I know, Mm -hmm. I know. This is why I write the scripts. Pat yourself on the back. I am, actually. You can't see it, but I am. So the three of us thought, how about a sequel to cap off the first journey of season two? And not just any sequel, not just a good one but in the eyes of many, surpasses the original film. So the next six weeks, we'll be watching what many consider to be the greatest sequel of all time, or one of the greatest sequels of all time. And a lot of the fans of this franchise consider it the best film in the franchise. We are spending the next six weeks getting to... The Matrix Reloaded! I am so hard right now. (laughs) Just kidding! Oh, damn. That movie's awful. (laughs) Seriously. That's the one you get a bonus for? <laughs> Anyways, we're going to, and this is for you, Rob, 1980s, The Empire Strikes Back. Star Wars Episode Five, or Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. Whatever you want to call the movie, most people call the movie great. Most Star Wars fans call it the best movie in the series. And many consider it to be the best sequel ever. But that wasn't always the case. And we'll discuss more of it when we get to the actual film in, in, in the next six weeks. But that's the movie we're heading towards. And But to head towards that movie, we need to present our lists. And then afterwards, sell them and vote on them like always. Now, we've added a few things this, this for this journey going forward in season two that we're talked about. We're not going to we can no longer use unless the movie is significantly older 
than like the 1970s or the 1960s. We cannot use an actor or an actress that we used to get into the last film. So because we used Ken Hudson Campbell to go from Armageddon to Groundhog Day, we cannot use Ken Hudson Campbell to get out of Groundhog Day. We can use any of the other actresses in the movie. That's fine. We cannot use him. And another thing that we did add this time around that we haven't had in previous ones, well, at least as a requirement, it was kind of one of those things that was suggested but never enforced. Um, we're, we're trying to make it to at least two films in whatever list you created you haven't seen. Right. Mm-hmm. And in, because of the little special caveat of this one, going towards The Empire Strikes Back, an awesome sequel, we um, – also decided that maybe we should try to add a little spice to this one and make at least a couple of the movies on this list sequels to other films. So there you go. I won the last one, so I'll be going last. So we're going to start with Josh this time. So Josh, you're not going last because uh, you won last time. You're going last because that's just the way the schedule dictates. And you know, all glory to the schedule, right? Glory to the the schedule. Yeah. All hail the schedule. Anyways, Josh, Let's hear your first list. How do you want to get us to The Empire Strikes Back? All right. Well, I think you guys uh, are going to like this one. It's not my favorite of my lists, but it's the first one I'm going to I'm going to give you guys. So, this list is called Invasion with an exclamation mark. Ooh. So, first we take Willie Garson out of Groundhog Day to What Planet Are You From? The 2000 sci-fi comedy. Okay. I've heard- I don't know much about this movie. But the summary basically says it's something about a group of aliens coming to Earth to find women. Is this Gary Shandling? I don't know. I think so. I think I've seen bits of this. But anywho, I know who is in this movie is Annette Bening. So we take Annette Bening to Mars Attacks. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Nice. Good choice. So from Mars Attacks, we take, at the time, a little-known actress named Natalie Portman to Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Oh, Josh, you're doing so good. Or Revenge of the Sith. It can be either or, because after Star Wars, we take Christopher Lee to Gremlins 2, The New Batch. Oh, I've actually never seen that one. I've only ever seen the first Gremlins. Oh, I love New Batch. Okay, you've redeemed yourself a bit now, Reginald. Okay, carry on. And then from Gremlins to the New Batch, we take Robert Picardo to The Burbs. That one 1989 (laughs) movie starring Mr. Tom Hanks. Nice. That's a good movie, too. And guess who's also in that movie? Who's that? Carrie Fisher. (gasps) She is. And guess who we take from The Burbs? To Star Wars, Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Harrison Ford. Peter Mayhew. No. I hate you guys. <laughs> no, honestly, not a bad list to start with, That's Josh. a pretty good yeah, list. Yeah, yeah. That's a pretty good list. I mean, it's not as strong as any of my lists, for sure, but not bad, not bad. I've seen Mars Attacks. I love Mars Attacks. Very few people I know love Mars Attacks. Oh, dude, it's been years since I've seen it. The two movies on that list I haven't seen is The Burbs and What Planet Are You From? Now, I've seen some of What Planet Are You From? Because I remember it. It was like on HBO. I don't know if it was a made-for-HBO movie. Or oh, what. it's got a 5.6 on IMDb, so I'm not oh, expecting a lot out of it. No. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, Josh. Oh. God, Josh. Oh. That's going to start our, this one. Why? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's like I said. I don't got a lot of hope for it. But... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like I told you, this is, in my opinion, my the, the weakest of my three lists. Although, if we were to keep with the theme of heading towards Empire Strikes Back, I would rather do Episode 3 as opposed to Episode 2, because Episode 3 does show him becoming Darth Vader. Empire Strikes mm-hmm. Back shows Darth Vader at probably his most badass. <laughs> so When I made the list, I made Episode 3 the uh, thing to go from. But episode two works because it's Attack of the Clones. You notice every one of these is about some kind of an invasion. 
Yeah, oh, okay, yeah, that, that. okay, I can. Yeah, so that's why he said episode two, Attack of the Clones, but episode three also works because you know the Empire is taking over type thing. Yeah, yeah, and honestly, I kind of prefer. Oh God, I never I thought I'd say this out loud. I kind of prefer episode two, Attack of the Clones. Oh my God, we're recording this I for know, this list. God. For this shit. list, because <laughs> ladies and gentlemen of Fire Pit first. Tom actually said, and I'm going to take this completely out of context forever until the day I die, I would actually prefer episode two. <laughs> because it's symmetry. We've got Attack of the Clones and Empire Strikes Back. They're both the middle parts of their respective trilogies. Not for quality. I'm not saying for oh, quality. Yeah, no, that is a all. good point. They're both sequels to the first of their trilogy. So that would that, that oh. does. But obviously... Dan's right. We're going to take that out of context so many yeah. times. Oh, and and it is an interesting dichotomy that we will be watching. If we watched episode two, we would be watching what many Star Wars fans consider the worst movie in the franchise. And then going to episode five or The Empire Strikes Back, which is what many Star Wars fans consider the best movie in the franchise. Uh, you know, we need, you need to do this. We're going to keep making that joke. And then we're going to be like, okay, Tom, I want you to edit in that little blurb. It's like, okay, what did Tom say during the selection section? And then uh, you're, you're going to edit that in. It's like, just, it's going to cut to you saying, I'm not going to edit that in, and then cut back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never going to edit that in. <laughs> so that about caps off my first list. Um, I like it. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. I like that list too. But like I said, I think that's the weakest of my three. But Tom, Tom, I'm curious to hear your first list now. Of course you are, Reginald. Because my list scared, but curious. Yeah, but um, kind of like going into a roller coaster that you've never been on. That's completely indoors and completely black. You're curious about it, but you don't know about it. Well, if you weren't afraid, you will be. You will be. Because my first list is all about happy endings. <laughs> nice. Yes. I see with it cuz I know the ending to Empire, so yeah, I know that this, this is not yeah. Go ahead. All right, so we're going to start off my list with a film I've never seen, but it did make it because it did come out to theaters in 2020. We're going to take Bill Murray from Groundhog Day to a film called On the Rocks. Oh, that's that mm. Apple Plus one. Um, yes, yes. Directed by Sofia Coppola. It's about a deadbeat dad that tries to reconcile uh, with his daughter and help her through her, what she thinks is maybe her husband's infidelity. It's got Bill Murray and Rashida, um, Jones. Um, oh, Rashida Jones and Marlon Wayans. Um, on IMDb, it's got a 6.5 and on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got an 86%. And Sofia Coppola, of course, Lost in Translation, Bling Ring. And of course, you know, Lost in Translation is what got Bill Murray an Oscar. Hmm. But from that, we're going to take Rashida Jones into a movie I've been wanting you guys to see for a while, The Social Network. Oh, Ooh, she's in that one, isn't she? Yes, she is. She's a lawyer in that one. Um, I've seen that movie. That's the Facebook movie, isn't it? Yes, yep. it is. Yes. Every time, yeah, okay. uh, it always comes up after I watch The Founder. And I'm like, I could watch that. I really enjoyed The Founder. And then I just end up watching The Founder again. <laughs> but in your defense, The Founder's a really good movie. That's why here. I have not yet seen The Founder, but hopefully one day we'll get to that one. But apparently the internet likes this one. It's got a 7.7 .7 on IMDb and a 96% on Rotten Tomato. Of course, directed by David Fincher and written by Aaron Sorkin and also David Fincher. And honestly, it is Jesse Eisenberg as what he should have been as Lex Luthor. This was perfect a performance. I saw this like, yep, he's going to be great as Luthor, and it was terrible. The Batman v Superman, not this. But we're going to take James Shanklin from the film into Moneyball. Oh, I love that movie. I've never seen that film. I'm actually surprised you've seen it. Actually, that doesn't surprise me all that much, Josh, considering it's essentially about how someone used an algorithm to win at baseball. That's exactly uh, why I watched it. It's been recommended to me because people are like, you would really like this movie. <laughs> I'm like, why do you say that? It uses computers and algorithms. And I'm like, okay, now you've got my interest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you had my curiosity. Now you have my erection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but this one's also enjoyed by the internet. 7.6 IMDb, 94% Rotten Tomato, directed by 
Bennett Miller from Foxcatcher and written by Aaron Sorkin. So it's, I mean, it's got some stats, including Brad Pitt, who we will take into the big short. It's essentially a movie about how a bunch of short sellers destroyed the economy back in 2006. <laughs> nice. Yes. I have not seen this one. 2006 or either. 2021? Yes. <laughs> yes. I imagine when I heard of this film, it's like the scene from Patton where he's watching his men destroy Rommel's forces. I want to make a meme of like the Reddit symbol overlaid over Patton, them saying, short sellers, you magnificent bastards, I saw your movie! Because that's his instruction on how to do that. <laughs> but we're going to take Ryan Gosling from that film, The Big Short, into one of not just a, the best sequel, but the best upgrades to an original film, Blade Runner 2049. Ooh, never seen. Me either. I haven't even seen the first one. Uh, you don't need to see the first one to see this one. And that's why I call it an upgrade. It's like took all the good things about the first one and just turned them up. And the internet agrees. 8.0 on IMDb, 88% on Rotten Tomato. And from there, we take Harrison Ford to Empire Strikes Back. That's not a bad not, list. Not a bad list. Definitely yeah. one to consider. I mean, it's almost entirely comprised of movies I've never seen before, but that's not a bad thing. And that's par for the course for Tom picking lists. Mm -hmm. And a few of those, at least two or three, I haven't seen, you know, on the rocks, uh, Moneyball, and the big short Blade Runner. I've seen a few. Times. I, I, I saw on the rock. I haven't seen on the rocks, but I saw the commercial trailer for on the rocks. It seems interesting. I've wanted to watch the social network. Moneyball is good. Never seen the big short or Blade Runner. So I will say that that's a good list. That's, that's a really good list. I would not be, sad to go with that list well, i have you. actually only seen two of the movies on that list one of them is the empire strikes back the other is the social network see i don't even count the final movie on my numbers or when i'm saying the two movies i haven't seen like i only go with the five that we get to really pick i see that i agree with that but no, that's a good list that's, that's a good a, list yeah that's a good one well thank you I, i'm trying to bring like my a plus game here i'm just this this one around i'm not gonna half-ass it just both butt cheeks into this so Watch out, y'all. Although I think that list does have the potential to be another uh, whistle stop tour. <laughs> yeah, that's a, there's a lot of heavy movies on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thankfully, some and we'll talk about more when we're selling them. But some of them have some comedy writers in there, so there, yeah, there's yeah. going to be some levity. Knock on wood. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, that was a good first list for Tom. So Dan, let's hear your first one. Okay, my first list is called Angst. <laughs> All the angst. <laughs> I already love it. <laughs> so much angst. How, how, how many DCEU movies are on this one? It, it's all DCEU. I mean, I'm don't out. ask I'm me. I'm just, I'm just shutting off my, I'm out. <laughs> don't ask me how he got him out of uh, uh, Groundhog Day, but I, I found a way. Uh, no. Okay. So we take Andy McDowell from Groundhog's Day to St. Elmo's Fire. Oh, good film. From St. Elmo's Fire, we take Emilio Estevez to The Mighty Ducks 3. Oh, Emilio! Emilio! <laughs> nice. The Mighty Duck, man. I swear to God, I was there. <laughs> Did you say Mighty Ducks 3? Yeah, Mighty Ducks 3. We could technically use Mighty Ducks 1, but I wanted to use 3 because it's a sequel. I've never seen the third one. Why couldn't we use 2? Because it's... Who are we taking? Tell me, who are we taking out of Mighty Ducks? Well, this person's not in Mighty Ducks 2, but he is in 1 and 3. We take Joss Ackland to Lethal Weapon 2. I knew it. <laughs> awesome. He's the, dip he's the diplomatic immunity guy. Oh, good choice. Okay. From Lethal Weapon 2, we take Danny Glover to Flight of the Intruder. Never seen that one or heard about it. It's not great. <laughs> I've never seen it. I've never seen it. But when I was looking it up, I was like, oof. okay. But it has, a, it has an audience, though. There are some people that do like it. Uh, from Flight of the Intruder, we take one Willem Dafoe to Clear and Present Danger. Oh! oh. Which is technically a sequel to The Hunt for Red October. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Yes. And from Clear and Present Danger, we take Harrison Ford to The Empire Strikes Back. Nigel, you were told not to bring it this time. You were told <laughs> to phone it in. What the heck, man? No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Because when I phoned it in, I was utterly disappointed. <laughs> so, 
it's okay. That was a great list, Dan. Like that that was a good list. Yeah, thanks. And what's funny is uh Joss Ackland, I just watched a movie with him, but you're never gonna guess what movie I just watched with him. Not least like one. literally like hour an hour before this uh we recorded. Mighty Ducks one. Nope. Tom, I'm gonna give you one chance. Because you're never gonna get it. You're right. I'm never gonna get it. Um what's well, my guess was going to be Bill and Ted 2, but we've already seen that one, so I give up. A kid in King Arthur's court. <laughs> oh my god, was he really in that film? He was King Arthur. Was he really? Yes. Now, I, I have to say, I've never seen the third Mighty Ducks film. I've only seen the first two. I have never seen St. Elmo's Fire. I have never seen Flight of the Intruder. I have only seen Clear and Present Danger twice in my entire life, and I have not seen it in years. Uh, however, Lethal Weapon 2 and I are very familiar friends. <laughs> yeah. so. I love all of the Mighty Ducks. I would argue that that is probably one of the greatest trilogies ever made, except for Back to the Future. But um, <laughs> I think that's a known factor in this podcast at least by now um yeah that's going to be the new drinking game here every time josh mentions a back to the future <laughs> in some way shape or form drink but uh no no that's a good list i've never seen saint elmo's fire love anything mighty ducks love lethal weapon 2 never heard a flight of the intruder um I never watched Clear and Present Danger. And for me, I want to say I've seen St. Elmo's Fire, but now I'm questioning it because I might be mistaking it with Diner. Well, it's a it's a Brat Pack movie. It was a movie, the Brat Pack. So it stars a lot of the same people that are in like, uh, not Breakfast at Tiffany's, that way early. Um, the Breakfast Club is what I meant to say. Um, maybe Diner? <clears throat> Young Guns, because it's got like Emilio Estevez, a couple other people in there. Uh, but it's a Brat Pack movie. It's Judd Nelson, Emilio Estevez, uh 16 Candles Girl. Molly Ringwald. Yeah, it's got Ali Sheedy in it, too. Okay, I'm looking at this cast. I just had to pull it up on IMDb to confirm. No, I take that back. I don't think I've seen this. I was mistaking it for Diner. I've never seen it. Apparently, it's one of those cult classic kind of films. Like, it didn't have a really high rating. I like the song. Yeah, I do, too. It's catchy. But, um, I don't know. I've always kind of wanted to see it. So, I figured that this would be as good a time as any to try so there we go. Um, but uh, I will sell the list later. I would very much like to see Josh's second list. Yes, yes, as would I. But kudos on a good starter. Nigel. That is that is a good list. Yeah, That's a good list. None right. of those I've seen. So well done. Woo. Really, you've not seen any of these except for Empire. Except for Empire, this would be. I, wow. I, unless I really. Wait, you've never you've never seen Lethal Weapon two. I have never seen Lethal Weapon two. Oh my god! Wow. Okay, I'm going to, even if we don't choose this list this time, I'm putting that on a movie list that I got to get to at some point in time because Tom's got to see Lethal Weapon 2. It's on my it's one of those ones it. he's probably seen it memed so many times he doesn't need to. Yeah, it's just been revoked. <laughs> but Josh, Sir, this kidding. is a Wendy's. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have what she's having. <laughs> All right, so my second list is called I'll Have Seconds. <laughs> <laughs> okay like similarly from my first list we'll take willie garson from groundhog day to wait for it fortress 2 oh no wait, wait. Oh, Dude, no. this 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 movie from 2000 <laughs> is just gonna blow your mind with its 4.6 rating oh, oh my god. god that's lower than swashbuckler oh man so from uh fortress 2 we take you I'm going to butcher this name, so I apologize. Yuji Akamoto to The Karate Kid Part 2. I okay, love that's that not a bad, film. That's a good film. Yeah. I've never like, This list will surprise you. I've only seen one movie on it. Fortress 2? No. But anywho, from Karate Kid Part 2, we take Marvin Cove to Rambo First Blood Part 2. <laughs> Yes! Yes! This, this, I'm voting for this list. <laughs> Fucking love that movie. God, this is amazingly. I've seen the first like bit of it, but I've never seen the whole movie. But from Rambo: First Blood Part Two, we take Charles Napier to Maniac Cop to or Manic Cop Two. I've seen Manic Cop. You're a I've son never of a seen jerk. any of the. I've never seen any of the manic cops. Yes, they are terrible. The first one is just, I mean, B movie terrible. Let's take. Okay, I'm gonna rectify. Let me re rewind that. It's such a cheesy film. 
Oh my god, but why do they need to make a sequel of it? Josh, why are you making For this, this podcast. Uh. But it's 5.9 <laughs> rating is going to take Robert Davi to 2014's The Expendables 3. Oh, no. <laughs> but guess oh. who's in Expendables 3? Everybody. <laughs> yes. But also Harrison Ford, who will take us into Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Okay. I mean, like, this list is, like, cheesy fun. This is a cheese pizza with extra cheese. <laughs> but... <laughs> This is a really bad cheese pizza in the sense of like, actually, no, this is okay. If I was to look at this as a six course dinner, all of the courses until I get to empire are terrible. I have to get through these really bad, tasteless entrees before I get to my filet mignon. I feel like the Patriots when they're going to the white house for their dinner and Trump just serves them McDonald's. (laughs) That was actually a college football team that he did that to. Not any better, but yeah, that's what he... Oh, my God. I'm sorry I brought up Ooh. Trump. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> oh, Fortress 2 is... If it's anything... If it's anywhere near as bad or as awesomely bad as Fortress 1, I'm is, sold. This is a, um, I have never seen them. But like I said, the only movie on that list I've seen is The Expendables 3. Karate Kid Part 2 is awesome. Yes. I've seen only that film. I've seen a little bit of Rambo 2, but that's about it. Uh, Fortress 2, is this that star David Carradine? I don't know. I'm looking that up because... Well, it was a, a sequel, so I went through it. <laughs> It does star David. No, Chris Lambert. That's who I'm thinking of. Chris oh, Lambert. Oh, yeah. Highlander. Yeah, Highlander. yeah. I might have seen a little bit of this. All right. This is amazing. Josh, this list is, uh, I mean, it's rough. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, but, it would be an but, interesting journey. <laughs> but Rambo First Blood Part 2 is like, I don't know. I love that movie so much. <laughs> I just love, actually, I love all the Rambo movies, like, a lot. Um. And I love the Karate Kid Part 2. And I just recently rewatched it because I started watching Cobra Kai. Uh, the Expendables 3. I've actually not seen that one. I've only seen Expendables 1 and 2. You've seen um, it then. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I know that the Expendables movies are nothing but Sylvester Stallone's excuse to get all of his, his 90s action movie buddies together and get a paycheck, which I can respect. I mean, mm-hmm. Adam Sandler does it and... Honestly, the Expendable movies are funnier than anything Sandler's put out in 10 years. This is true. If it has Terry <laughs> Crews, I will enjoy it because Terry Crews is the best part of the first one. Yeah, Expendables 3 does have Terry Crews in it. Oh, God, Josh. If Karate Kid 2 and Rambo 2 will be the good ones, but wow. I am. <laughs> yeah, the, the rest are going to be fun. <laughs> you want to see some bad movies? These are some bad movies. My brother's father in law gave him a 12 pack of random beers from his beer of the month club. And he gave that to me and I'm going to need all of them. This list (laughs) If we chose to choose it. I think I might need a few of them too. (laughs) Yeah. All right. Well, let's keep this train rolling. All right, Tom. So what's your next list? Oh, that's a good question. Josh. Your second list is going to be a hard one to top, but this one. Yes. I I do like my last list too. It was, I think it's, it would be a lot of fun. It, fun in the masochistic way, but this one is going out of this world, literally, because I'm calling this one Space is the Place. And I'm sorry, Josh, I'm just going to have to stomp you in the ground with this because we're going to start off following Bill Murray into Space Jam. Come on and slam. <laughs> Welcome to the jam. I'm not going to lie. I had a couple, like my next list. I almost used this movie too, but no, no, no. Awesome film. Awesome film. And this year is its 25th anniversary. Jesus Christ. Right? Man, I feel old. Yes, you should. This film is about ready to go to its junior year of college or its third year of its freshman year of college, depending on who you are. <clears throat> Not me. Honestly, I looked this up, guys. This isn't as popular as we thought it did. This only has a 43% of Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, no, it was it was not very well liked, especially by, you know, air quotes, voting age people back in the day. But if you were a kid in the 90s, this movie was the shit. Oh, it's in my also had a pretty awesome soundtrack. Oh, very much so. I mean, even if uh, our listeners don't like the film, they're going to love listening to the film, but they may not like the next film because we're going to take Brandon Hammond into Mars Attacks! 
yes, I also have Mars Attacks on this list here, Josh. So, and I was so happy when I saw it could connect because I haven't seen Mars Attacks in years. Yep, I, uh, I, 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 I think I went similar route too. Mm-hmm. That's a good one, though. That's a good one. I, th- I figured you'd approve. And oddly enough, I was surprised. I didn't know she was in this film, and I was really glad she did because we missed out Sarah on Jessica this Parker. Next- Sarah Jessica Parker, yes. Nailed who it. was in? Yep, who was in Flight Sex of the of Navigator? Flight of the Navigator. Flight of the Navigator. <laughs> do you want to present Tom's list, Josh, or do you want to let Tom? I was hoping do this? he would I say mean... Sex and I mean Flight of the Navigator. Yeah. And I have seen Flight of the Navigator. It's been years since I've seen it. Yeah, when I was a kid. But this next one, I have never seen. And you're going to scream when we take Veronica Cartwright to Alien. Nice. Thank you very much. She was the mom, wasn't she? In uh, Flight of the Navigator? Uh, Flight of the Navigator? I believe so, yeah. I was going to say, the mom in Alien? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was the queen alien. She <laughs> she double rolled that. Very good physical actress. I couldn't tell. No makeup. <laughs> Awful. Awful. <laughs> Somebody mute his ass. <laughs> but uh, from um, Alien, we're going to take Ian Holm, one Bilbo Baggins, to Time Bandits. Oh, ouch. Like the, Terry, <laughs> the Terry Gilliam film, also written by um, um, Michael Palin, actually. Great film. It's got a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes and a 7.0 on IMDb. So it's almost right up there with Alien in terms of popularity. Now, the movie's about, uh, for those who've never heard of it, a young boy accidentally joins a band of time-traveling dwarves as they jump from era to era looking for treasure to steal. It also stars... Long parted friend of the channel, Sean Connery. Mm. Um, oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, indeed. So we we would get a bit of that if we went with this one. But one of the dwarves was played by Kenny Baker, who plays R two D two in Empire Strikes Back, and was R two D two in all the trilogies. So I don't think he was in Rogue One. Well, I don't think R two D two was in Rogue One. <laughs> he said all of the trilogies. Yeah, R two D two is in Rogue One. Very, very, very briefly. Yes, he did play R2-D2 in the prequel in the original trilogy, but none of the sequel trilogy and not Rogue One. Yeah, but so that's my list right there. Space is a place. That's not a bad list. That's, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty yes, good. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, again, I was trying to uh, bring my A game on this one. So I think Nigel tried to top that. I think I just might. All right. So my next list is called What Can Go Wrong Will Go Wrong. So 2020. Yeah, pretty much. All of these movies involve the best laid plans, so to speak. Uh, Moore's Law. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we take Bill Murray from Groundhog Day to Ghostbusters 2. A good sequel. Good sequel start. Yeah. Yep. Yep. From Ghostbusters 2, we take Rick Moranis to Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Oh, (laughs) nicely done, Nigel. In Honey, I Blew Up the Kid, there stars a very young, who grew up to be a very hot, Carrie Russell. And we take her to Mission Impossible 3. I don't think I've seen that one. I hear good things about the third one. I think that's one was Philip Seymour Hoffman, right? Yes, and it was a return. It was a return to form. The first one wasn't too bad. The second one was very disappointing. Mission Impossible Three is actually where the series starts getting really good. So we take Harry Russell from Honey I Blew Up the Kid to Mission Impossible Three. From Mission Impossible Three, we take Mission Director Lawrence Fishburne to Just Cause. Why are we going with that film? Just cause. cause. Just cause. Exactly. <laughs> but we're also going with that film because in that film stars Kate Capshaw, who also starred in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. I wonder how you're getting out from this one to uh, Empire. Hmm, let me put on my thinking cap. Short round, of course. Yes. <laughs> so, from Indiana Jones, obviously, we take Harrison Ford to the Empire Strikes Back. Not a bad second list there, Nigel. Mm. Um, good sequel list for your sequel list yeah the only movie in this list that's not a sequel is um uh just cause just cause yeah just cause is the only movie in this list that's not a sequel so what are the movies you haven't seen in this one i've never seen just cause i've never seen honey i blew up the kid really dude i saw honey i blew up the kid in theaters my brother claims we saw it we went to go see it for one of our birthdays but if we did that was the last time i saw it and i don't remember any of it I don't remember any of the story beats. I know the movie's about the kid, him, him getting, well, 
not blowing up the kid isn't exploding, but blowing up the kid isn't making him giant. But I've I've seen Honey I Shrunk the Kids a hundred times, but I've never seen Honey I I, and if I have seen it, I don't remember it. My brother swears up and down we saw this movie, and I'm like, I don't remember seeing it. I don't remember giant any baby of the story crawling being. through Las Vegas. I mean, uh, maybe I've seen it on TV or something a couple times, but I don't remember it. I don't remember it at all. Oh, it's a it's it's not a great sequel, but it's a good movie. Mm. I liked it. I, I did. I remember liking it. It's been years since I've seen it, but I remember liking it because he had a solar van. It was funny because every time it went into the shade, it died. Yes. Yes. I remember that. And, oh, God. Yeah. I've saw it a few times on VHS. Um, yeah. See, I remember I remember all the story beats to Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. Like, I remember the kid getting stuck in the Cheerios and almost getting eaten by dad. I remember the, the ant and the scorpion fighting and the ant dying and everyone's sad that the ant's dying. And I remember like the lawnmower, they almost got sucked into the lawnmower. Like I remember all the little bits from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but mm-hmm. I don't remember anything of Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. If I've ever seen it, I don't think I've seen it. It was a whole thing where like there's the, they're trying to like look at the uh, x-ray or whatever thing of a kid holding a bunny rabbit and they think it's like yeah. a weird uh, <laughs> alien and the guy just like hits the resolution buttons like it's a kid holding a rabbit you idiots yeah it's yeah you don't worry if you don't remember that film i'm sure rick moranis doesn't remember it it's a fairly <laughs> unremarkable movie um, yeah, yeah he definitely uh retired for a <coughs> yes um well that's because his wife died yeah we know we know but uh i wasn't saying that was the reason god dan yeah you're horrible Putting two terrible things together. What's wrong with you? Don't make me go with my third list. <laughs> oh God, I'm I'm curious and scared of. The third oh, I'll, list. I'll I'll tell you guys. I'll tell you guys the third list here in a bit. But yeah, um, these are the these are these are the two I felt the strongest about. So mm-hmm. yes. Well, speaking of third lists. Right. Oh God! Oh God! Yes. Well, no. I, I actually this is my favorite list of that uh, of the three lists that I will be presenting today. Really? You like this one better than your second list? No, just wait. Just, of, wait. Okay. just wait. Just wait. I like my second list, but I, I believe that this is okay. Let's put it like this one. This one has the movie that I really want to see, and we'll get to that one. But uh, first, it's Back to the Future Two. Back to the Future. It, it, let's put it like this. This list feels almost like a combination of your guys' second lists. Because I titled this list Far, Far Away. So um, we take Bill Murray from Groundhog Day to Ghostbusters 2, where he fights aliens, or not aliens, ghosts that came from far, far away. And from there, we follow Sigourney Weaver to... Aliens? Galaxy Quest. Ah! Okay. That's a good movie, though. That's my fourth favorite Star Trek film. Yes. Um, (laughs) You know, where they encounter aliens from far, far away, and they come and they have to go fight stuff. But uh, anywho, from Galaxy Quest, we take the one, the only, the Alan Rickman to Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Where Kevin Costner comes from uh, the Middle East a.k.a. far, far away and returns to England and forgets his English accent. <laughs> but technically, that Robin Hood also came from far, far away because that Robin Hood came from California, which, yes. hadn't, which hadn't been discovered yet. But from Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, we follow Brian Blessed to someplace far, far away. And I, Tom, I think you're going to like this one. Oh, no. Oh, go. Sell. I know what you let's all say it together. Flash, Flash Gordon. Gordon. Yes. Oh, 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 Josh, you got my birthday, Christmas, and Valentine's Day <laughs> list. Oh, <laughs> you, sir. Oh, oh. Yes. Keep going. So we go to Flash Gordon. And now that's not the one movie that I was super excited to watch because it's this next one. We're going to take John Hollis from Flash Gordon to a 1989 movie starring Mark Hamill and Bill Paxton, Slipstream. And yes, it is every bad as you think it is. I've never seen it, but the trailer made me go, oh my God, I have to watch this movie. Okay. Oh wait, 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 wait. You mean to tell me Mark Hamill and Bill Paxton did a movie together? And there's a reason the world forgot about it. And here, I'm looking up. I'm seeing. I'm checking this on IMDb. Um, but I saw the trailer, and I'm like, this movie. Yes. Oh, my God. I have to watch it. 
All respect to Mark Hamill, but if you watch any of his movies in the 80s and the 90s post Star Wars, you can see why he um, rebuilt as himself as a yeah yes yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm 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 seeing the thing on uh, IMDb, and I just gotta say uh, it has the whole like VHS covers like from the depths of the earth to the edge of existence, the hunt is on. Yes, we will want to be far, far away from this 4.8 rating on IMDb. Four, 43%, 43% on Rotten Tomatoes, too. Jesus. Oh God. Although I have a list that has movies that have a lower score. Why are but, we trying to outdo ourselves in that regard? Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God. So I'm not – I have it on mute, so I – my I, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of seeing bits and pieces of the trailer here, and I'm kind of like – are you sure this wasn't a TV movie? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it doesn't seem good. But anywho, we follow Mark Hamill to, as you guessed it, Star Wars Episode Five: The Empire Strikes Back. <sighs> okay, okay, Josh, uh, that list um, hurts. Go ahead. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. It's got some good films that I've actually never seen. Flash Gordon, and I've always kind of wanted to see it because it's. I hear it's one of those like so bad it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on, and I've never seen or even heard of Slipstream. Oh, neither and now am I. I am morbidly curious. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> honestly, to start it off with, Ghostbusters Two is a pretty inspired on both of your parts here. It's just, I mean, Ghostbusters Two is not the best of the Ghostbuster films, but it's a good sequel to start on. And uh, I've wanted to see Flash Gordon for a while. I've never heard of Slipstream. By at least no Galaxy Quest and Robin Hood are gonna get me through. <laughs> I think I think the problem with Ghostbusters too isn't that it's a bad film; it's just a safe film. Very like much it's a very so, it's yeah. a very it's a very safe sequel. And if we if we did do this movie, and I'm sure even if we don't pick these lists, we're gonna get to it eventually. But if we did do Ghostbusters too, I would talk about that a lot. It's a very safe sequel. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And that's that's sometimes that hurts. It sometimes when they do a sequel that's too safe, it's like. Uh, it, it hurts. But it does have one of my favorite scenes in Ghostbusters and most films is where they um, walk through New York say, uh, to the sounds of higher. They yes. Oh, God. Higher. So, Dude, I remember it's like I love that song, but I didn't hear it again in a movie until like 1999's The Kid with Bruce Willis. And now I hear it everywhere. I like... um. Uh, I like the courtroom scene in oh Ghostbusters too. Oh my like, god! Yes. You're like, oh, when Venkman, Peter goes, well, we figured there were so many other holes in Times Square that nobody would notice. <laughs> two in the box. <laughs> Come on, two in the box. One in the hole. Ready to go. We be fast and they, they, they be, be slow. slow. Oh my god! I forgot about that scene. Okay, okay. So well done. This is. This is going to be hard to top. Yeah, this is honestly your bookend lists. Well, no, honestly, your second list. Is, I really like your second list a lot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, I know they're almost all bad films like Fortress 2. Oh, God. Uh, Karate Kid Part 2. That's a good sequel. Rambo First Blood Part 2. Yeah, I mean, that's where Rambo starts becoming a meme. But yeah, um, Maniac Cop 2. I didn't even know there was a Maniac Cop 2. Uh, yeah. The Expendables 3. Never seen it, but I'm pretty sure it's cheesy fun. Uh, and star obviously, yeah. So your uh, your second list is pretty good, honestly, Josh. All three of your lists have have some merit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, we'll we'll talk about more of your lists while we're selling them because I don't want to. I don't want. Yeah, <laughs> Let, let's let's check out Tom's third list. We are and we will. So my third list. This one I didn't know if we were going to go with two lists, um, and just two lists, but this one I got as my third as a just in case. I'm not fond of this list <laughs> because it, I already love it. <laughs> there's a film on here I don't want to see. <laughs> I've oh, seen God. it, and it's the worst film ever I've ever seen. This list I'm tentatively calling "Going Places" because um, technically, in all these films, people are going places. Though technically, one films um, they're going to hell. Um, so we're going to take Richard Overton from Groundhog Day, to Dinner with Schmucks. 2010 film uh, with Paul Rudd and Steve Carell. It's got a 42% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I thought was pretty damn low, and then I heard your guys' lists. Um, 
I've seen this film. I actually like this film. I, I understand why most people don't, but I like it. It's also got a whole host of your standard um, Judd Apatow actors in it, including Paul Rudd, who we take into Knocked Up. Hmm. Yes, I, I'm sure most of you have seen this one. Again, it's got pretty much the majority of the Judd Apatow crew. I mean, the film's basically Seth Rogen bangs above his pay grade, but then whoopsies into a romance with Katherine Heigl, um, who just, we'll talk more when we try to sell these. That poor girl needs to fire her agent. But from that film, we take Jay Baruchel. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's this Baruchel. Baruchel, yes. Bechamel, whatever, to This Is The End. Oh, I love that movie. I've never seen that film. Oh my God, I've seen it a couple times. It is so... Danny McBride in that movie plays Danny McBride in the most Danny McBride way. I love that movie. Well, that's all of them. They're all just... Yeah, I know, but I love that movie. Okay. It's so bad, it's good. Well, then this one takes us into the, the so bad, it's bad. It's got a 32% on Rotten Tomato and a 6.6 on IMDb. The most bullshit film I've ever seen. We take Seth Rogen to Fanboys. <laughs> I fucking hate this film. You watched that with me the first time you see that movie. You didn't hate it then. I hate this fucking film. Fanboys. Why? Because it's nothing more than Warzy's fan wank bullshit. And I'm using uh... RW on that one. I'm using the pejorative word. He didn't hate it when we first watched it years and years ago. I did so. Don't you dare did try to not. History. No, this film is bullshit. Oh, and those for that don't know fanboys, it's essentially the urban myth of Star Wars fanatics taking a cross country trip to Lucas's Skywalker Ranch so their dying friend can see the screening of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Um. And for those which after he watched that movie, the cancer flared up and it killed him and he was OK with it. Yes, that was what he died as his final memory. It was in remission. And then he watched episode one. The cancer on the Star Wars franchise up until the new trilogy. But we take it to a not bullshit film. We take Kevin Smith uh, to Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, which has a 52 percent on Rotten Tomatoes and a 6.8 on IMDb. And in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, where they're trying to go to Hollywood to stop, you know, them from making the Blunt Man and Chronic film, we take Carrie Fisher to Empire Strikes Back, which has a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. So that is my number three list called Going Places, which compared to your guys, your list, Josh, yeah, I thought this was a pretty weak list. And yeah, it's, um, thanks for confirming that. (laughs) Yeah, this one's not great. No, no, it wasn't great at all. Um, again, I haven't seen most of these films. Um, well, actually, no, I've seen Knocked Up and uh, Dinner for Schmucks. I, Schmucks. I haven't seen This is the End. Actually, I have I have seen most of these films. I take that back. I needed a third <laughs> list, and this was all I could come up with. So if we don't pick this list, oh, darn, I don't have to watch Fanboys again. You've probably only seen it once with me. Yes. 15 years ago or whenever it came out. I watched it on Netflix years ago. I fucking hate that film. Thank you, Nigel. Thank you. It's such a... You Trekkies would. It's basically the Blues Brothers without any of the charm. (laughs) Never seen the Blues Brothers, but that was fun. They they replaced the Nazis from Blues Brothers with Trekkies in Fanboys. You can see why I have some umbrage with this film. (laughs) So that's list number three. Nigel, take us home. Okay. All right. Here we go. This list is... You're going to put yours in the list there, Tom? Or in the doc? No. I don't want to do it anyway. (laughs) You don't even want it up for consideration. Uh, Nice. I really don't. I'm not going to... That's not even a joke. I freaking hate fanboys. Ugh. But Nigel, I'm distracting you from your day in the sun. What? Okay. All right. Here we go. This is my third list. I call this one, maybe you should have stopped at one. <laughs> because all this whole list is all sequels. All, every film in this list is a sequel. And honestly, with the exception of the two bookend lists, are considered the, the, the worst movie in their sequel, or their franchise, or a very, very, very weak sequel. Okay, 
So, uh, again, we take Bill Murray from Groundhog Day and go to Ghostbusters 2. Mm-hmm. Ghostbusters 2 is not a bad sequel to Ghostbusters, but it's still... Well, it's the only sequel to Ghostbusters so far. We haven't seen the most the one that's about to come out. So, But anyways, uh, Bill Murray to Ghostbusters 2. From Ghostbusters 2, we take Sigourney Weaver to Alien Resurrection. Oh, <laughs> damn. Bad. Ouch. Okay. Yeah. Ouch. Yeah, yeah. For a long time, people thought Alien 3 was the worst Alien sequel, and then Alien Resurrection came out and said, hold my beer. But Ron Perlman is in that he movie. He is in that movie. And we take Ron Perlman from Alien Resurrection. If you say Hellboy 2, I'm going to crawl through this mic and slap no, you. No, 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 not Hellboy 2. Although, I did try. But we take Ron Perlman to Blade 2. <laughs> <laughs> that's not better that's not better dan <laughs> no dan no. no it's not dan oh god that's such a bad movie. it is it's not as bad as blade three but no, no it's, bar. it's nowhere near as good as blade one. Oh god anyway i needed that <laughs> all right in blade two stars a young norman reedus and we take him to the Boondock Saints 2. Damn it, mm. Nigel! Oh. You said the Boondock Saints, and I was like, oh, yeah, oh, no. We could technically go and call an audible and watch Boondock Saints 1, because it is much better than 2 from all everything I hear. I've never seen 2. I have. It is bad. It is really bad. Yeah, I hear it's bad. I heard it's really bad. But if we called an audible and watched 1, you wouldn't hurt my feelings. Um, anyways, because we can still use the same actor... Willem Dafoe to Claire in Present Danger and Harrison Ford to The Empire Strikes Back. Oof. Oof. Josh, mm. this almost tied your second list for list with the worst films. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, I think he's got that with Alien Resurrection and Boondock Saints, too. Oof. But you're also implying with this list that Clear and Present Danger is not as good as Hunt for Red October, which I don't know. No, it's not as good as Hunt for Red October. I would say of the Jack Ryan trilogy, like I think that was Hunt for Red October, Clear and Present Danger, and uh, I know there was another one in that list. Um, Patriot Patriot Games? Games. Uh, Clear and Present Danger is like the weakest one. Like Patriot Games is much better than this, and A Hunt for Red October is better than all of them because they rebooted the franchise shortly after Clear and Present Danger. And then they did the one with um, Ben Affleck. Uh, what was the one with that one? Some what was that fears. one called? Some, Some of All Some Fears. Of all Thank fears. you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then they did Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit with Captain Kirk, uh, New Kirk. Um, and then after. First time. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, he got rebooted into a TV show on Amazon, which is much, much better. And it's amazing too. Cause he's on both Jack Ryan and he's in one division. So that's cool. But <laughs> no, he's not. I see Asian, you Asian, yeah, I see Asian, you Asian Jim. Yeah. Asian Jim is in one division. Okay. Wow. I was thinking, wait a minute. He's not, uh, I get the joke. <laughs> yeah. See everyone at work watches the office. So they got that joke immediately. I'm like, he's in both for Jack Ryan and one division. And then like Anthony immediately started laughing. He's like, <laughs> yeah, he is. But that's my third list. Maybe you should have stopped at one. Maybe I should have stopped at one because <laughs> that list is bad. It would be a really fun group of episodes to record, but we would we would suffer for our art. Yeah, yeah. when we recorded uh, our flying high through the hero's journey, the mummy was the low point in this one. This list is basically all the mummy. <laughs> Yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, like I said, they would be a lot of fun to record, but I just, um, I've actually, I've never seen Boondock Saints 2 and I really don't want to. Um, I've seen it twice. You don't want I, to. That's twice as many times as I've seen it. It is a bad movie. Yeah. I've, I've recently rewatched the first one. Like within the past few years, I've rewatched the first one. I don't think it holds up as well as it did 10, 15 years ago. Boondock yeah. Saints one. Well, uh, you look at the world around us. Yeah, I mean, but still, I mean, boon. I mean, watching it together would give us a nice discussion on you know the merits of having a good editor, because um, it would. I mean, he had the same guy, but he didn't have his editor from the first one, and it shows. Well, no, Boondock Saints two got caught in uh, development hell. 
because like that one movie kept was supposed to come out the next summer, but it never did until it finally was released, and everybody was like, "What is this shit?" Yeah, it's there's a ten year gap between releases. Boondock Saints one is nineteen ninety nine, and Boondock Saints two is two thousand nine. Yeah, like, and it's one of those things. I remember in two thousand four, me and my buddies were really into Boondock Saints. And uh, we kept looking and waiting for the sequel to come out. And every year it was supposed to come out, but it never did. And then when it finally did, he was like, what is this shit? Yeah. Yeah. It's. Oof. Oof. Yeah. But now I think we're at the point where we um, now try to sell one another. Because um, not to spoil it, Nigel, but I don't think this three is going to win it for you. Hey, th- uh, th- that was my weakest one. I'm, I'm the opposite of Josh. I keep my weakest one in the back until, uh, unless, you know, we want to try it. And sometimes I get lucky. I think if I'm not mistaken, I think our first journey was my quote unquote weakest list. And we ended up going with that. Yeah, one. yeah That was your like, well, I've got one. That was, yeah. That was what established themes. Like yeah. we tried to keep themes of movies. Yeah. And the only movie I haven't seen is boondock saints two, And I don't want to watch it. I've seen Ghostbusters 2 a thousand times. I've seen Alien Resurrection, I don't know, a few times. I hate it every time I watch it. I only watch the first half of Blade 2 because, honestly, after Ron Perlman gets introduced, I, I don't like to watch it anymore because it's stupid. Never seen Boondock Saints. Clear and Present Danger is okay, but it's also on another one of my lists that I like a lot better. So, yeah. All right, so let's do it this way. And feel free to say no to this. Let's try something. Let's pick one list that you advocate for and one list of everybody else. And then we will kind of use that to weed out or thin out the line. And uh, it's like you'll pick a list of yours and then one list out of each of the other ones. I like that. Yeah, let's yeah, let's uh, start going through the list, guys. <laughs> And welcome back to the second season of The Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and imperial recruitment officer, Tom. And I just got back your scores from the firing range, and all of your targets, you hit nothing. Great job! You're going to make an excellent stormtrooper! And thank you for tuning into this special episode of The Fire Pit. Not only is this our seventh selection section, but this is the first episode of our second season. That's right, we're back, baby! Three guys from a backwaters world of Ohio thrust into a galaxy much bigger than themselves, overcoming the odds to make this the best podcast there is. It's the stuff of movies. What better way to celebrate such a movie story than with a movie about a group of people who overestimate their chances and get absolutely destroyed by overwhelming odds? The Empire Strikes Back. It's a morale booster. And if you want to tell us how much of a boost we've been to your morale, or if you want to boost us with some ads that you'd like hosted, which will help our morale, feel free to email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Just put fire pit in the subject line, as well as what you're emailing in regards, whether it's for an ad, a recommendation, a question, a correction, or just something you want us to know about. Then send it our way, hyperspace style. Then we'll take your email. Read it, store it in an astrometric droid, shoot it off to a desert planet, and never bother to respond. And we're sure someone will find a use for it for something or other. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Sing it with me. Capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. But it's time for me to get back to the selecting part of this selection section. Thank you all for listening, and as always, good luck.
Well, let's start with you, Josh, since you started off the list um, calling. I would have to say the one list of mine that I advocate the most for is Far, Far Away. That's got a bunch of movies that I really like. Like, I've been wanting to watch Ghostbusters 2, and I've been, like, I think in the past three selection sections, I've had a movie or a list that had Ghostbusters 2. I put off watching that movie again because I would have watched it with you guys. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I like Far, Far Away because it has a couple of movies I've never seen, but I'm very interested in seeing. And I know Tom has been wanting to watch Flash Gordon. I just recently re listened to. I forget which episode, but he talked about it. Wanting to watch Flash Gordon. Oh, the the the, the Q and A. Yeah, the, the Q and A episode. Of, oh yeah, it was. We, yeah, it was. It was the Q and A. Somebody mentioned, would we ever use a bad movie as a destination film? And Tom said that he would pick if we don't. I guess we don't pick this list. He would probably eventually try to get to Flash Gordon as a bad yeah. movie. Yeah, I, I would have to advocate that one. And Galaxy Quest, it would be fun to play that one just for the. Uh, Star Trek references. I mean, we <laughs> technically haven't hit a Star Trek movie yet, but that would be fun because that is just a parody of Star Trek. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. It is, as I mentioned before, my fourth favorite Star Trek film. Yes, and that is totally accurate. Of Tom's lists, I would have to say I would have to go with his Space is the Place. That's got a lot of good movies. Bill Murray and Space Jam, Mars Attacks, Flight of the Navigator, Alien, and then there's Time Bandits, which I'm not sure about. But I like that one. That one's a good one. Of Dan's lists, probably angst, all the angst. That was a good list, yes. That was a good list, yes. But yeah, those would be my three choices out of your guys's. Nice, nice, nice. And I'm going to have to say, since I'm next on the list, honestly, Josh, as much as I love your third list, just because I've not seen a good majority of them. I'm going to have to go with your second list. Yeah, I know Maniac Cop 2, The Fortress 2, and Expendables are probably going to be hot garbage on a sled down a garbage hill, but I'm curious to see them. Very much curious. And Karate Kid 2, I love. I love it so much. I used to have one of those like... Uh, drum toy thingies when we went to like Disney World or Epcot Center, excuse me. I got one of those and I just played that thing so much it basically broke it apart. Um, And by broke it apart, I think I mean my dad broke it so I would stop using the damn thing all the time. Yeah, I'm going to have to vote for that one. But if we went with your third list, I'm not going to cry because Flash Mm. Gordon and also Slipstream. Yes, I've got to watch the slipstream like i just i can't advocate that more i watched the trailer and i'm like i've got to watch this movie i'm going to push hard for my third list you have no idea because i want to watch slipstream and i want to watch it with you guys for the first time Mm -hmm, i mm -hmm. just i don't know i think that would be just one of the best episodes we've ever recorded oh god it does watch bucklers it's got some morbid uh appeal to it that's for sure like it's i just watched the trailer in silent and i'm like why does this movie look amazing (laughs) 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 why does this movie (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, Nigel, preference for me um, of your list. I'm also going to echo Josh on this one. Angst. All the angst. That's just a solid one. I have not seen any of these films. So so this would, that would be a good list for you then because we you know you want to watch movies, at least try to watch some movies that you've never seen before. So yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And also I know it's not going to hurt me like anyone else's lists. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So on that one, it's got my um, blessing. And well, from my- I, don't, I don't know. I think if I'm not mistaken, Flight of the Intruder has a 25% on Rotten Tomatoes. Jesus Christ. It's a solid six. Yeah, a six out of 10 on IMDb. It, it's not great. It's not great. It's got its fans, but at least 75% of those people didn't like it. So, honestly, whatever. I think we'd enjoy making the episode. So yeah. Oh, definitely, yes. And for if of my lists, I would also champion Space is a Place, especially because it is the 25th anniversary of Space Jam. And I know I love Happy Endings, my first list. That's just a solid list for sure. But Blade Runner 2049, we're probably going to get to at some point. Social Network, I am making it a mission for us to get to. I something. I mean, when was Facebook founded? If a destination lands on that date, we'll make that a destination. But I really want you guys to see it just because it's such a good film. So Space is the Place for me. Also because 
I've never seen Alien. And it's about time. I can't believe you've never seen Alien. I know, right? The closest I've come to seeing Alien is um, in Epcot Center, there's like um, kind of a drive through the movies sort of ride. And it drives you through like the sets of films. And one of them was Alien. And as we were driving through the Nostradamus or whatever the ship was called, like Alien would come down from the rafters and like acid water but ass would drip on you and that terrified the frick out of me so bad i couldn't sleep on my back for a year <laughs> anytime i was under a vent i would have to inch away from it because i was so afraid as a kid that an alien was gonna pop down from it but i've never seen the film so hmm. it's about time nigel what about you so for my personal preference of my lists i'm also gonna say angst all the angst I've never seen St. Elmo's Fire. I've never seen Mighty Ducks 3. I've never seen Flight of the Intruder. And I've only seen Clear and Present Danger a few times. Not in a long time either. But obviously, Lethal Weapon 2 and I are really good friends. Um, (laughs) But I'm championing that list, not because of Lethal Weapon 2, but because I've never seen half the movies on that list. And St. Elmo's Fire isn't my typical kind of movie. I don't really would watch that kind of movie. So uh, movies that take me out of my comfort zone, I'm, I'm trying to get more, quote unquote, comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's me. I'll, I'm championing my angst, all the angst. Um, my other two lists, I've seen all the movies and maybe I should have stopped at one, except for Boondock <laughs> Saints 2, but I don't want to watch that one. And What Can Go Wrong, Will Go Wrong contains a bunch of movies that I think we'll get to anyways. So, mm-hmm. uh, Tom, Tom, I really liked your second list. Uh, Space is the place. I love Space Jam. I've got a soft spot for that film. I've, ne- You know what? I've never seen Mars Attacks. I've seen it, but it's been long time. I've never seen Mars Attacks. I've read the comics and stuff that it was based on, but I've never, ever, ever seen the movie. Um, what are those? Do you love it or hate it? From most of the people I know, hate it. I think I was my daughter's age or around that age when I watched uh, Flight of the Navigator last. Like it's been a long time since I've seen that film. Um, Alien, love that film. That's in my top ten. Time Bandits, oh boy. It could be another Pathfinder. <laughs> or it could be another Midnight Special. <laughs> I don't know. No, it's it's more of a swashbuckler. I, I, I've never seen it, but I know enough about it. That's a lie. I don't. I think it's going to be bad. Well, it's directed by Terry Gilliam, who also did uh, Fear and Moving in Las Vegas and 12 Monkeys. But I'll, I'll try to sell this one once we, we're done with this section. Go ahead, Nigel. But anyways, Tom, I'm, I have to say your, your space is the place. I'm going to vote for that one. I did like your happy endings, but I think it also contains movies that we'll get to either way, uh, especially Social Network, Moneyball, and Blade Runner, just because those are really popular movies with really big actors in them. Yeah, I mean, Moneyball's a baseball movie, mm-hmm. so you never know. We might get to that one sooner or later. Yeah, and uh, your going places list, um, no. All of it, no. <laughs> I, yeah, The only movie on that list I've even seen that I like, is, other than Empire, is Jay and Silent Bob. I'd actually... Did not like This Is The End, because I'm not a big Judd Apatow fan, except for Pineapple Express. It's the only one of his movies I actually kind of like. Yeah, I don't like Knocked Up. Oh, no, I meant to say Knocked Up. I don't like Knocked Up. I didn't like This Is The End that much. Fanboys can fuck right off. (laughs) I've never seen Dinner for Schmucks, but that whole list, no. I'm going to vote no on that one. Sorry, no. You're not hurting my feelings on that one (laughs) at all. Eh, Josh. Josh is... This is the hardest one for me because Josh actually presented three really good lists. Like I love his first list and I love the fact that halfway through the journey, we watch episode two and then three movies later we watch episode five. So we watch like the worst film in the whole franchise and then we watch the best film in the whole. Well, Mm -hmm. okay. We watch the second worst movie now. Yeah, If we went with invasion, I would not be sad if like you guys both want to do that one. I would be like, let's do it. I would totally be down for that. Yeah. But my preference is, uh, oh, man, I'll have seconds and far, far away are both really good. Yeah, I know. See, I put those t- together. <sighs> I put those about on par. But if I had to choose gun to my head, I'd have to pick far, far away. And that's a hard part, too, because both have like some back to back solid films. I mean, yeah, Odd so Seconds like- has Karate Kid 2 and Rambo Part 2. I know. 
And Slipstream is the only thing making me pick Far, Far Away. I've got to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. This is like, this is my, um, this is my seven moment. What's in the box? What's in the box? And it's going to be a severed head. It's going to be something. <laughs> you awful. know it's going to be, but you want to see. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be something. It's going to be something awful, awful, awful. But I'm like, what's in the box? What's in the box? Yeah, far, Far Away reminds me of um, Sink or Swim Summer Tour. Where we went the yes. I mean, that back the back where we had um a swashbuckler and dead calm. I think Flash Gordon will be the swashbuckler and Slipstream will be the dead calm. That's just how it's gonna be. Uh, so, yeah, you know what? I oh my god. I really want to watch Rambo again, but I I'm gonna have to go with Far Far Away. I, I just think that's such a good list. I, and even though I could make an argument that Robin Hood Prince of Thieves should technically be a destination film, we can only have so many destinations in yeah. here. And I can't keep using that excuse to not pick a list. Oh, that should be a destination film. Nah. Robin Hood's a Prince of Thieves, I think, is a good film. Good I don't know film. if it's a destination film. Yeah, I mean, I hypothetically, Galaxy Quest could make a good destination film for, like, the fourth best Star mm-hmm. Trek or whatever. But, uh, no, no, no I, I like Far, Far Away, like I said. Yeah. I'll just... have seconds in Far, Far Away. I think Far, Far Away would definitely be. <laughs> yeah. Um. Your your first list has more movies I haven't seen. I've never seen What Planet Are You From, never seen Mars Attacks, never seen Gremlins 2. You um, haven't seen Gremlins 2. Oh, we're going to have to find a way to get No, that. I've seen Gremlins 1. I've seen I've seen Gremlins 1 a lot, but I've actually never watched number 2. Um, and then your second list also has movies I've never seen. Fortress 2, although I don't think anyone <laughs> saw that film, at least. No, <laughs> maybe Christopher Lambert's immediate family. Um Maniac Cop 2. I didn't even know there was a Maniac Cop 2. Never seen The Expendables 3, but it's got, like, everybody. So we might get to those movies eventually. Because, like, anyone that was popular in the 80s and 90s is in the film. (laughs) So yeah, all of Sylvester Stallone's buddies that used to be in the same rack of genre at Blockbuster Video are all in those films. So It was the movie we all wanted to watch in the 80s. It is, and now that, but we wanted to watch it when they were in their prime. Yeah, now they're all going through male menopause at the same time, and it's like, eh, yeah. guys. I still, I still maintain though that it's funny. He's doing the same thing Adam Sandler's doing, just with action films instead of comedies. But The Expendables is still funnier than any of the Adam Sandler films that he's been doing lately. Well, and also we haven't had a new Expendables movie in almost seven years, so yeah. Well, that's because America weeps. Yeah. Anyway, America weeps. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Far, Far Away for my second preference for Josh. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So now it's between my list of angst, all the angst, uh, space is the place, and Far, Far Away got two votes to one. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, we'll just do most votes on each of our lists or the final three. Okay. So now we got to choose Far, Far Away, Space is the Place, or Angst, all the angst. Well, my f- I'm gonna have to go with Far, Far Away. Just, I got to champion my own list on this one. I, I would say a close second would be Space is the Place. Oh, I see how it is. Just because I won the last two in a row, right? I don't even get a vote now. I'm just saying those are mine. I'm out of here. Right, I'm out of here. I'm just kidding. All right, Tom. That's, uh, the, the final decision is yours now, man. All right. <laughs> well, I choose mine. I win. I win. Hooray. Finally, Tom breaks the streak. I mean, again, of my list, I, I mean, I can't choose my own list. So if... Um, if I got to choose any list as the one we absolutely go with, it's got to be far, far away because, I mean, if that's the list you're championing, Josh, then I will vote for that one. I'm, I'm hoping you go with um, my space is the place. I mean, because I, I do have to at least defend my baby because it's Space Jam's 25th anniversary. Plus, we've got Flight of the Navigator, which none of us have seen since the 80s. Um um, it's got. Oh, I've seen it recently within the past five to ten years. Because you have Josh. Um, but, and from my side, I do want to see Alien, you know, eventually. We're going to see it. I mean, it's directed by Ridley Scott, who did the original Blade Runner. We have Time Bandits, who, again, directed by Terry Gilliam. It's got Sean Connery, who, bless his heart, it's got Ian Holm from Lord of the Rings. And Mars Attacks, too. I mean, come on. You've got Danny DeVito in there. You've got Pierce Brosnan. You've got Brandon Hammond from Soul Food and The Fan. It's got Jack Nicholson. Uh, you can't really go. It's got Jim Brown from The Dirty Dozen and The Running Man. And again, I'm not going to lie, Nigel. Your angst, all the angst. God damn, that's such a solid list. 
and I've not seen any of them. I have not seen a single one of those films. But of, of all three of our lists, if we're going to pick one, Josh, I'm going to go with um, your list number two. Since I can't vote for my own list, I'm voting for your list. But I'm hoping you all vote for a space in the place. All right. So I guess it's down to me. I vote my list always because I'm the best. All right. Game over then. <laughs> all right. This is the end of the no. podcast. We're done. No more season two. We can't decide on a list. <laughs> Uh, honestly, um, if we're not going to go with angst, all the angst, and I really wish we were because I just, I really want to see St. Elmo's fire <laughs> because I just kind of want to see what it's all about, but whatever, we'll get to there someday. I got to go far, far away. I just, it's a really good list that, and I'm so what's in the box about slipstream. I just, I can't stop now. I, I really can't stop. It's probably going to kill me, but I, I have to stick my fork into this electrical socket and see what happens. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a, an appropriate way to look at it. <laughs> I, I can't like, this is going to hurt me. Mom and dad said it's going to hurt me. I don't believe them. It hurts me. Spoiler alert. But, uh, but then I also really want to watch Flash Gordon with you guys. I have never seen it before. But now I don't want to watch it by myself. Yeah. It's like, the podcast <laughs> forced me to watch this. <laughs> I've wanted to watch it, actually, since I watched um, the, the the Seth MacFarlane movie with the bear. Um, Ted, Ted. Ted. Ted, yeah. Yeah, because his buddy's obsessed with that movie. And like I've, I've always wanted to go back and watch it, you know, and also it's been parodied a hundred times. But mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, I thought we'd seen Ted together. Now, I've seen Ted. I've never seen Flash Gordon. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta do that movie sometime, too. Yes, we will. Yeah, if we're not gonna go with angst, all the angst, and I really do like Tom's Space is the Place list, but I I just, I don't know. Something about Far, Far Away keeps drawing me back to it. Probably Slipstream. I'm gonna regret this. I'm gonna regret this hard. <laughs> we both are. We both are. But hey, at least are. we got Qu- Galaxy Quest and Robin Hood on that. Yeah, and, and it, <laughs> it, it, it caps off with, with Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with Far, Far Away. Uh, as, as much as I, you know, I feel bad because I think Tom's only got one list and that was the Sink or Swim Summer Tour. Mm-hmm. That's why I'm looking at space as the place. I would be very content going with that one. I just, that's why I said it's, it'd be a, another option. That, that would be my second preference. I mean, I'll take a pity vote. But I just, if I didn't have, if I didn't find Slipstream, Tom, I would totally go with your list. I get it. That's okay. I'm used to being the redheaded stepchild. No, it's okay. You're not entirely off the hook. Time Bandits isn't much better. No, uh, no. <laughs> But something about Bill Paxton and Mark Hamill in a movie, just like Dan said, what's in the box? I can't stop. I can't stop. <laughs> We're going was... to regret it, Nigel. I know. Probably, probably. But at the same time, I want to I wanna tweet Mark Hamill and see if we can get him on the episode. Not for Empire, but for Slipstream. <laughs> you guys remember this film? Well, we didn't remember it. We found it on accident. Yes, yes, we uncovered it. <laughs> and then he blocks us on Twitter for uncovering that film. He thought it was buried and gone forever. Can you even find that movie? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> I will get it somehow. By God, I will get that movie. I, I got a feeling that we're going to be in the middle of watching Slipstream, and Tom's going to unfriend me on Facebook for not picking his list, which I will just remind him before he blocks me. You had time bandits, but uh, I, I just got one thing to say. Yes. Flash. Oh, we're go- I, I'm going. I'm voting far, far away. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm really sorry. Don't hate me. I do. I hate both of you so I'm much. I'm so sorry. No, you're so, not. So, like, you're not. You're no, not I legitimately sorry yet. <laughs> I might. Well, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Although I did copy and paste spaces to place onto another document I have because some of those movies I want to try to get to in other ways. Like, yeah, I really want to see Mars Attacks. I've always been kind of curious about it in Flight of the Navigator. I haven't seen it in a isn't long that, time. Isn't that so. the one where they, uh, the aliens stitch, not Pierce Brosnan's head, but that's, somebody's head to a that's chihuahua? That's Mars Attacks. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's what I said. Yes. Oh, I thought you were talking about um, Flight of the Navigator. Like, no. No, no, no. That's smart Mars Attacks. I'm like, Mars Attacks. That's where they stitch somebody's head to it. Yes, yes. Is it Tay Leone? I forget who is it, whose head it was. That might have been Sarah Jessica yeah. Parker. No, I think it was Terry Leone. I can't remember. It's been so long since I've seen that film. I love the film. 
They did something to Pierce Brosnan, too, because he was like a reporter. But yeah, no, we definitely need to get to those movies. But I think we've uh, come to the end of this, team. We've picked our winner here. So, Josh, after a drought, after all the time in the desert, you win a destination and a journey. Well, remember, it's not a win because nobody really wins. (laughs) But we beat Dan. But anywho. You almost didn't. You almost didn't. You guys, Dude, I know Dan, you, you were thinking. you had a solid fucking list. You really <laughs> yeah, did. Holy but, cow. Angst all the but angst. Tom did bring his A game this time. He definitely brought his we A game. We all did. Josh. And let's just all admit that I may not have had the best list, but we all want to see what's in the we box. We do want to see what's in That's the box. That's pretty yeah. much it. If, if, if you hadn't put the head in the box and put it at my feet, and I'm sitting there telling Morgan Freeman what's in the box, what's in the box, I probably would have picked Tom's space as the place because I was really leaning to the, towards that. And then I'm like, I saw that trailer for Slipstream. I'm like, what is this? Why do I need to see it? But why do I not want to see it? <laughs> Especially Flash going, damn it, Josh. Yeah, that was totally there to get Tom's vote. <laughs> yeah. No, no, well, honestly, the tipping point for me isn't Slipstream. I really want to watch Flash Gordon with you guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a first for all of us. And that's like the de facto like epic science fantasy fiction fantasy whatever that's going to be interesting <laughs> yeah plus it's got timothy dalton in the film the only scene i've seen of that film is t- the timothy dalton scene and he just devours every last inch of scenery yeah. honestly the only the only scene i've ever seen of that whole film is the the scene where he's on like the 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 hover bike thing and then the flying eagle dudes led by brian blessed come out and they're like my hawkman to me <laughs> brian you know? blessed and, you know, oh yes i love brian blessed but yeah my hawkman you know and then he's like oh my god yeah we need to see that film together <laughs> so josh do you want to do you want to tell the yes, give yes. everyone the list you, you, you the list is yours to express to the group what are we watching? All right, well, let's, let's, let's do a quick brainstorm. What are we going to call this journey? The fire pit strikes back. <laughs> I oh, like it. I like that. I, That's I do a like good that. one. Yeah, that, I'm voting for that, too. Damn it. <laughs> well, we got it in one. <laughs> Holy shit. That never yeah. happens. The fire pit strikes back. So T, are we going to TFPSB or TFSB? Yes. <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> so what are we watching josh what's the journey oh uh because it's the empire strikes back you need to make the movie sound ominous because the empire yeah, remember, because the empire strikes back is where they introduced the imperial march it is it is do we do, do we want a movie trailer guy in a world do it yes <laughs> oh, <God>. yes, yes. <clears throat> let me try this ghostbusters 2 via sigourney weaver to Galaxy Quest. That's bad. That was bad. I, that felt bad doing it. <laughs> yeah, start with taking Bill Murray to Ghostbusters 2. and then Taking Bill Murray to Ghostbusters 2. Then taking Sigourney Weaver to 1999's Galaxy Quest. Then taking Alan Rickman to Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Then taking Brian Blessed to Flash Gordon. Then... John Hollis to the 1989 classic film Slipstream starring Mark Hamill, who we take to Star Wars Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. Dun, 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 dun. Not bad, not bad. Now try not not so much movie tone voice, but can you do like deep ominous? You are Vader. You are Vader's left-hand man. Taking Bill Murray to Ghostbusters 2. Then Sigourney Weaver to Galaxy Quest. Alan Rickman to Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Brian Blessed to Flash Gordon. Taking John Hollis to Slipstream. And finally, Mark Hamill. To Star Wars, Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. We got a winner. Oh my god, that's a keeper. Then then you can end it with, they're altering the podcast. Pray they don't alter it any further. They're altering the podcast.
Pray they don't alter it further. There it is! Oh my it's god, so, it's so, so good. good! Oh, oh my you, god! If, if you could put, if you could put just a little bit of a voice effect in that, that's a pretty damn good Darth Vader impression. I know, oh, right? I I don't know if I have to do much to edit that. Holy crap! Oh my very god! Very good, Josh. Very, very, very good. Well, thank you. <laughs> Bravo! Oh my! I I had to hold my mouth shut to not say anything. It's like stop, oh my stop! God, that's my so penis kind of gets so erect. <laughs> okay, all right. Holy I was already kind. Of, I was already excited for this next journey. I'm pumped for it now. Like, when's next Friday, man? Let's get mm-hmm. to this. Yeah, you know, like, let's start this shit. Yeah. Uh, yes. You have any idea how hard? Like, Rob and I talk quite a bit. Do you have any idea how hard it is not being able to tell him right now? <laughs> Like, we're going Empire Strikes Back. Because he even said he even said in a message the other day. That's why I said this one's for you, Rob. He said in a message the other day, he goes, you know, Empire's a good destination film. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's all right. <laughs> for a Star Wars film. And that is Selection Section 7 in the bag. We are going to be heading to a galaxy far, far away. But as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, Google, pretty much anywhere fine podcasts are made and sold. So look us up and you can uh, get your podcast fix. But be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps us out. Definitely pushes us up in the uh, search index or whatever you want to call it. And be sure to leave us a rating. And if you write us a rating, we'll be sure to read it out on our next episode. And thank you to those who have given us a nice five-star rating. We are rocking it. So thank you guys. But be sure to join us on discord as well to enjoy the fun bring some friends in join us in the conversation there's plenty of room by the fire it's there you can suggest movie destinations uh, discuss the latest episodes let the group know why my lists are always best and they really should get around to picking them hint 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 fans of the podcast hint hint but if you also want to bug them not on discord you can like us on facebook Follow us on Twitter, uh, where you can also be alerted where the new episodes drop. And if you want to get a hold of us old school style, um, well, not too old school because we don't have a P.O. box. You can email us at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. Uh, talk movies, feedback, even sponsorship. Maybe call Tom a whiny little bitch. As always, no matter how you choose to reach out, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you providing feedback. We appreciate all of you out there listening to us. Thank you so much. And um, for shout outs tonight, I would like to shout out from the Shattered Order podcast, Wink, because he has agreed to come on and be our special guest star for... Uh, our Empire Strikes Back, our destination film for this uh, episode. So if you haven't listened to the Shattered Order podcast, I highly recommend it. It's a podcast about the Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes mobile game on iOS and Android. If you play that game, I cannot uh, recommend their podcast enough. If you don't play the game, you're not going to have any idea what's going on. But if you do start playing the game, definitely listen to them. They have a lot of good information, and they are pretty funny, and I love listening to their podcast. I've been listening to them for over three years, and I have actually a patron to them for over three years. So at least Wink has agreed to come on to uh, do this, mostly out of blackmail and guilt. So thank you, Wink, for agreeing to come on and uh, partake in our episode. Speaking of blackmailing and guilt, I want to thank Zencaster for... Yet again, saving the bacon of this podcast. Holy cow, this could have wound up turning into another selection section six, if not for them. So, who boy, if any of you are looking to start your own podcast, we're not getting funded by them. But they are so much better than Skype by far. So we recommend it. They're free. Uh, Mostly, I think at a certain point, you do have to start paying. And honestly, I'm going to be glad to pay because it's worth it. It is so worth it. It's easy to use. And especially if you're the kind of people who often um, hit the wrong buttons and wind up 
bringing down your internet and you have to get back in and you think you've lost your recording. Nope. Zencaster's got your back. So thank you that. And for our Facebook followers here who are, you know, continuing to fan the flames, let's say fan the flames. We're not arsonists here. They're fanning the flames. Chris, Chi Chi, and Justin, thank you very much for joining us by the fire pit. And for all you other many, many people who have been joining us here, appreciate you. We are going to keep these fire pits burning for you, so plenty of room over here by the heat. So I don't know how many more fire puns I can make, so Nigel? Uh, Obviously, a big shout out to Peggy, old school friend of the channel. Thanks for listening since back in season one and being a big supporter of the podcast. Also a a Star Wars fan, so I'm sure she's going to be looking forward to... um, this next journey uh shout out to my wife who um is actually really excited for this one because the empire strikes back is her favorite star wars film but not for the reason almost everyone else has it as their favorite star wars film it's simply her favorite because she thinks the scene where luke skywalker is carrying yoda around in his backpack is quote the cutest scene in all the movies so it is pretty adorable yeah 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 yes when we were still dating I, i had her watch that film and she was like couldn't find Yoda in that scene. She goes, where's Yoda? I'm like, he's in Luke's backpack. He's climbing up the tree. And she goes, oh, cute. So from that point on, that's been her favorite one. <clears throat> Shout out to uh, my wife. She's going to enjoy the next journey. And a final big shout out to Rob of Rob's Custom PCs, sponsor of the channel, friend of the channel. He's in the Discord. Huge Star Wars geek. T is to Star Wars what I am to Star Trek. And he has been asking for a Star Wars movie, pretty much since he started listening, he is going to be tickled pink with this journey. I can't wait to hear his reaction. Oh, trust me, uh, Rob, I totally feel you. I- I'm the huge Star Wars fan out of the three of us. So I am to Star Wars what these guys are to Star Trek too. So I'm right there with you. So Dan, amazingly enough, is the one who recommended this one, not me. And because of you, Rob. So it goes to show, guys, you pester us enough, you post enough, email us enough, you bribe us enough. We'll, uh, Blackmail works both ways. Also, it means it means we are listening. When you guys suggest movies and movie destinations and stuff like that, we might not be able to get to them right away, but we do take the notes and the feedback to heart, and we're like, we might not be able to fit it in this journey or even the next journey, but we'll find a way to fit the movie in because we know there's movies you guys want to see. So, or I mean, not movies you want to see, but movies you want to see us do good, bad, or otherwise. So, and we want to get to them. So thanks very much for listening. We hope season two is better. even better than yeah. season one, because I think we ironed out a lot of the, the rough edges in um, season one. And, and I know we still got some ways to go, but I, we're on the right path. Yeah. The first episode of season two versus the f- last episode of season two has the dichotomy of the first and last episodes of season one. I think this is going to be another growing season. Yeah, we're, yes. we're Parks and Rec season two. Much better than the first yeah. one. We're The Office season two. Yes. Still listen to the first one because it's still a solid first season. Yes. Uh, but that's it. Um, Josh, take us out. So do you guys want to go out for dinner in a movie? I uh, bought condoms. Oh, not that kind out. My bad. Um, So that's been it for selection section number seven. Thank you guys all for joining us. And the awkward puns. I've been Josh. I've been Tom. And I've been Dan. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Stay safe out there.
ammo to Star Wars Episode 5 The Empire Strikes Back The Fire Pit Strikes Back with its second season as Dan, Tom, and Josh jump into hyperspace to The Empire Strikes Back We're altering the podcast Pray 